नमस्कार हेलो वंस अगेन अ वेरी वॉम वेलकम टू सी आई टी एन सी आर टी लाइव फोन एंड इंटरक्टिव प्रोग्राम माई नेम इज तानवी खुराना एंड हियर वी आर विद एन इंग्लिश क्लास एंड वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस द चैप्टर दैट्स कॉल्ड द ब्लैक एरोप्लेन वी आर गोइंग टू अंडरस्टैंड दिस टेक्स्ट एंड अप्रीशिएट द टेक्स्ट सो इफ यू ऑल्सो लाइक दिस पर्टिकुलर टेक्स्ट द ब्लैक एरोप्लेन हैव यू रेड दिस चैप्टर इज देर एनी क्वेश्चन दैट कम्स टू योर माइंड please give us a call on our number which is 8880440559 at this moment you're watching us on pme vidya channel number 10 for all the 10th class students here we are with this topic the black aeroplane so like i said there are multiple mediums uh, through which you can connect with us uh, you can also email us the email id would be dth.class10 @cit.nic.in and we have a very special guest in our studio who will be explaining this text and uh, let me please introduce dr amit ranjan to all of you sir a very warm welcome thank you so much tanvi sir is from cit and crt new delhi itself and uh, he's going to explain a lot of things regarding this text so let's just begin and uh, i would like to ask him sir what is this text all about and uh, the black aeroplane generally aeroplanes are white mm. so why is this black what's the concept behind it the moment you hear black Uh, there's something ominous about it, yeah. and the story is about white fog. So, if it was a white aeroplane, it wouldn't be seen. So, it has to be black. So, it's a, it's a tactical thing as well as the color black makes it portentous, ominous that there's something, some mysterious element about it. Right. Um, though originally, the story is not called the black aeroplane. Okay. It's a very shortened version in two pages that we have in this book. of a novella called the shepherd by um, the very famous um, uh, mystery thriller writer frederick fawcett um, who is british frederick fawcett is known for um, uh, he's a best seller he sold around 70 million copies of his various novels like the day of the jackal um, the odessa files cobra and so on and so forth so is a very interesting character frederick fawcett um, Uh, is one of the youngest people to have been commissioned as a royal air force pilot in 1958 he was um, only 19 years of age he flew for about 15 years and so he um, knows the ins and outs of the air force and planes and so on and so forth and um, you can see a lot of technical stuff um, uh, in his novels and later he became a journalist with bbc when the bbc was covering the biafra war in um, nigeria which was very embarrassing for um, great britain as the vietnam war was embarrassing for the united states so they decided to drop it at which point he became a freelance journalist and went to nigeria um, covered that so he is also a very well known political commentator so he knows his planes he knows his wars and he knows the politics and the conspiracy theories a very deadly cocktail of Uh, for a writer and which is why frederick fawcett is um, um, so famous so he's not written much unlike um, uh, uh, you know best selling pops uh, pop authors who produce 50 70 novels frederick fawcett probably just has 10 okay. but um, he ranks amongst the likes of john grisham or people like that um so this particular story is, is a novella which he forgot to um, he lost the diamond ring he had to gift his wife on christmas in 1974 so then to make up for that his wife said you will have to gift me a ghost story and so then he wrote it in one night in one sitting uh, so it's not a full length novel it's a novel of about 10000 words and a ghost story generally would have a haunted um, castle as as is wont with um, the european tradition and stuff but he being a um, uh, a pilot wanted to set it in the sky and so it's a ghost story involving two um, airplanes um and so that's that's the genesis of this it was written in 1974 and it's about 1957 christmas eve um so very briefly the synopsis of the story as it is in the book and i'll also um, explicate how it's different from the actual novella So in our book in NCERT book it's called the Black Shepherd and there's this uh, pilot who's not named the protagonist who's flying back to England for Christmas to meet reunite with his family and hopes to land at um, an RAF station and suddenly there's a dense fog 
and he can he does not have enough fuel to fly around it so he has to fly through it so he has the option he is 150 kilometers away from paris he has the option to turn around go back to paris land at paris or or make it to uh, so he um, considering his own experience he thinks he can fly through the clouds he keeps flying and then his entire electronic system fails the compass fails the radio system fails and he's completely lost at which point in a dense white cloud at which point is completely desperate uh, it's certain death that he'd fall into the north sea at which point he spots a black aeroplane coming towards him and he can also see the person inside it who waves at him and that's why the title of the novel is shepherd he's a shepherd on the eve of um, christmas a shepherd is another name for jesus christ um that he would lead him um or god the shepherd and uh, lead him back to safety and that's what happens so in in our story not much details are given but in the original there's a lot more and um, that person guides him back to safety and he has only 5 minutes of fuel left to land which means a certain crash despite the help suddenly the fog disappears and there's a runway in front of him he lands and um, uh, then he asks at the base Uh, who was the person who helped him and um, the girl in the story says um, but there was nobody you made it on your own that's how the story um, ends in the book there are substantial departures um, from the original um, and which is also interesting how things are adapted when they have to be shortened um, for school etc so in the original it's he's flying from germany uh, which has been sort of changed to paris in in our book and he's flying a de havilland vampire um, dh100 flight which in our book is ds008 dakota um, i don't know why the name has been changed and um, um, it's, it's a very detailed account with very technical details of the flight and how the failure happens and um, how the other plane which is a mosquito from second world war which was a relic by 1957 was 12 years too old these small planes which used to fly during the second world war and which were now only used for reco- reconnaissance or um, weather reporting it's one of those flights and um, it's very beautifully detailed um, in the novel how um, how the instructions that the other person gives him and uh, it's entirely through sign language that they communicate he raises five fingers which means um, he's got only 5 minutes of fuel and so on and so forth and um, it's very thrilling because the fog is continuous up to about 100 feet above the ground so till the last moment we do not know what is going to happen to his plane suddenly the fog clears and there's a, a runway in front of him and then um, uh, in in shepherd the novel he goes on um, makes phone calls asks the man at the base uh, who is drunk and he thinks he's answering in in the fashion that he's answering because he's drunk um and he says that there could possibly be no help because their station does not have such infrastructure he asks is it is it not miriam st george and he says of course not it's not miriam st george he takes a few more names it's none of those stations it is a station called minton which is only used for storage which has no equipment it does not even have um, a beacon to guide anyone so it's a complete miracle that he lands and um, the twist in the tale in the original is that there's the initials jk written on that plane and at the air base that he lands on he sees the picture of a person whose initials were jk um john callaghan if i'm right um and that was a pilot who was lost in 1943 in a mission and um, and so on the christmas eve the same day that he is rescued so this became a ghost story this became a science fiction story as well as a christmas story okay so this is aired in on canada cbc 1 every year um, before christmas this is the last story they aired so this become a legendary story um, a christmas tale which is aired in most uh, uh, most of the western countries at the time of christmas that's a pretty beautiful story and uh, like you said uh, there are multiple categories which we can put into beat a mystery thriller or uh, multiple many so is it a 
is it inspired from a real story or uh, is it author's imagination uh, there is no evidence to uh, inspiration though there is a lot of folklore around it that uh, there were many such stories floating around during the second world war and uh, there was many, a lot of such folklore so there must have been but uh, frederick forsyth himself in uh, never said that in any interview he just um, said what i said that it was a, a ghost story gift for his wife on on the eve of christmas of 1974 okay it seems like as it sounds like it's a very special story to yeah, him absolutely. okay any more details you would like to fill in for the story absolutely um, as in it's it's a very uh, uh, it's it's so popular because it's it's very dense and very layered it's not just um, the thrill element that you get the, there are many stories which are thrillers but mm. they do not have the longevity um, like this particular um, story um, and one is reminded of um, and these are early days of flying obviously so which was very hazardous and the equipments were not sound and um, there were lots of accidents that happened and lots of stories of bravery and, and being found so one of the main themes of the story is um, that the human agency pitted against nature so it's um, it's not always your skill your competence that sees you through there's a lot of times when there's some invisible hand um, um, and unknown mysterious happenings in lives and and that is what it points to um, this black plane that helped him through um, did not exist it was a ghost plane so to say now there are two angles to it either you can believe in the ghostliness of it mm. or or a supernatural occurrence that there are supernatural occurrences or paranormal occurrences which we do not understand mm. a lot of times there is a lot of inexplicable stuff there's that's one aspect to it mm. there are many things in life which cannot be explained that there's some other agency which comes to our aid and the other is uh, to look at it psychologically mm. that it's all within us the black plane is within him he has the skills but it is actually his subconscious which guides him through that there are moments when your conscious thought does not know what you are doing but your subconscious your your core your um, inner being bails you out in in deep crisis because you know it and there's something deep within you which can guide you without language to that and which is why the sign language also between the uh, two people on the alleged ghost deceased pilot and and the uh, protagonist okay so can we say that the story teaches us uh, to believe in ourselves or and to follow our own consciousness and uh, you know maybe we can say that uh, we should uh, always believe in hope that is a conscious thought unfortunately mm -hmm. and this is about the unconscious this is about the subconscious it says of course it teaches us hope that most difficult situation there is redemption still there is a way to uh, to bail yourself out but at the same time it it also shows that there are lots of forces in the nature around us um, that we do not that we are not aware of but they exist this is also a statement um beside that it's also a very um, a deeply enriching story because it it uh, delineates it shows the battle of a human versus nature so one is reminded of something like um, ernest hemingway's old man in the sea where this old man is on the sea and his attacked his boat is attacked by sharks he is to come back to the shore he's gone too far out and the entire novel uh, old man in the sea is about this old man's battle against the ocean and similarly here a man's battle against the skies um then he knows there's certain death in in the north sea down um, down below um and that and so also one has to mark that uh, this is not a military operation story a man is flying to christmas to his family so it is about the joy of flying otherwise it would have become a combat novel and so he takes a combat out of it to concentrate on flying the joy of flying the meaning of flying the quest of flying that human beings have always dreamt of from uh, mythological tales of um, you know icarus flying into the sky or in hindu mythology sampati or hanuman flying to the sun so flying has always been an obsession uh, a dream 
and what one experiences. Uh, so, that is a very detailed description of looking at the world from 5000 feet through the fog and understanding the loneliness of uh, our existence and the relationship between an individual and the society also. And, uh, so, that is also an important aspect of it. Uh, one is also reminded of writers like um, the French writer Saint Exupéry, uh, who was a compulsive flyer and a writer. He was more famous as a writer than a pilot, but his writing was because of his flying. So, he refused to own any property ever or to own any money ever. He would spend all his money, so that he would be poor enough to take up a flying assignment again. And um, uh, in one crash, his body was all damaged. Um, he managed because of his contacts to still be able to fly. And, and similarly, you see in Frederick Fawcett that, um, uh, that obsession with flying, uh, that oneness um, with being alone in the sky. So, that is also an element in the story which makes it um, very special uh, of being alone in the sky, of, of being free and yet being tied to the world in, in many ways. Absolutely. Um. I think that is a brilliant feeling even when we see the birds, they can fly and we can't. So, uh, maybe humans can be a little jealous of them. So, talking about the story particularly here, uh, you mentioned portions of the original novella and uh, the parts which are mentioned in the NCRT textbook. Okay. So, would you recommend uh, a literature student of class 10 so to read the novella as well to understand the comparison or uh, you know? Oh, absolutely, one must read it, uh, because um, this is just a glimpse um, in, into it. And um, a, a novel is uh, special because of the detailing in it, because of not just the details of how the maneuvers happen, how he is finally able to reach the ground, uh, but the psychological detailing of what can happen, or what happens when you are stuck in a dense fog, in any situation in life, what your mind goes through and um, what and how one comes out of it or, or how one feels trapped in it uh, and, and the juxtaposition between um, that feeling of being trapped and then, then liberation when you, when you finally are able to um, solve a situation like that by yourself or by some divine help as, as this um, um, story suggests. Okay. Any vocabulary children are learning from this text or metaphor or uh, understanding what is irony and uh, other stuff? Um, yes, definitely. It is a very um, literary piece though in, in our extract it is kind of truncated. So, you do not get that richness of novel which is why um, I recommend reading The Shepherd um, as well. Um, but, yeah, there, there are many, uh, it is deeply allegorical and metaphorical. Allegorical because, like I said, uh, the title itself, uh, The Shepherd, uh, is uh, suggestive of um, a sort of a spiritual connection of a higher force guiding you somewhere, that, um, that there is our consciousness and beyond that, there is a realm in which we are guided by, by a guiding light towards um, um, towards something special, towards your destiny. Um, so, it is allegorical in that sense and, and it is uh, also metaphorical in, in many ways of um, uh, flying as a metaphor of, of freedom and so on and so forth. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, do you think that children have to be a believer, um, have to be believer in uh, supernatural power to connect? With oh, no, 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 not at all. That is the thing about literature that it gives you a perspective. It is it's open ended. It is not a moral message or anything. It is the experience of an ex-pilot who has flown many years and uh, who feels a certain way and there are four clothes that are there. And um, it is also deeply scientific in many ways, uh, the detailing and how um, uh, it is also about, like I said, tapping into the power of the, of, of the subconscious. But lit literature, literary text students at this stage at, in class 10 and onwards and even before that should understand that literature is not always about a moral message or that uh, one has to believe in something. It's about uh, deep human experiences, it is also about connections 
how we connect um, and it's, it's about our tryst with nature, our tryst with truth and a lot of other things. It's not just about belief. Okay. Okay. And uh, would you like to recommend any other novels outside the NCRT text uh, that uh, students should read, similar to this one? Mm, no, definitely. So, like I mentioned, Saint Exupéry, the French writer, his brilliant novel from 1939, uh, um, The Wind and the Stars, um, Night Flight. So, he also he wrote a lot about um, um, flying. Um, and uh, like I said, he was obsessed with flying. So on one occasion, his wife, um, as uh, this is uh, a memoir by his wife, um, and it's called The Tale of the Rose. Um, so she falls to leprosy. She is very ill. And some, um, some tribal doctor in Africa suggests that she be fed uh, and bathed in goat milk from Madagascar. So instead of, let's say, resettling in Madagascar for a few months, he flies from France to Madagascar every day to fetch a pail of milk for her and she gets miraculously cured. So there are these all these pilot's tales which, um, which sound um, very different from um, just what you would call flying memoirs or, or science fiction. Uh, they have a tinge of um, um, a very, um, very eccentric, um, out, outwardly um, uh, nature in these um, uh, stories. Yeah. Okay. So, um, this was everything about uh, this text, The Black Aeroplane. And uh, like he said, that um, there are many other uh, pilot tales which you can study and uh, then maybe you can create a connection between this particular text. So, I really hope that you enjoyed this session. Thank you so much, sir, for joining us here and uh, letting us know the details of this text. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you to all our viewers for watching this program. I really hope that you liked it. If in case you have not watched it, then uh, this will be uploaded on our YouTube channel, which is NCERT official. You can watch it anytime, anywhere you want. So we're wrapping up this particular text, but uh, stay here. Don't go anywhere. We're coming up with an, another maths class and the, the title which uh, is going to be discussed would be Circles Part 3. So keep your questions ready and keep them sending. Keep on watching PME with their channels. Thank you once again. I'm Tanvi Khurana signing off. Thank you. Namaskar.